This conference will now be recorded. There we go. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it's now 6 p.m. on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. I'll call this regular meeting of council to order. I respectfully acknowledge that we are meeting on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional lands of the Cree, Anishinaabe, and the homeland of the Métis people. Uh, around the council table tonight, uh, Ian Chatson, Penny McMorris, Lawn Turner, and on the screen we have a Councillor Kumka, Erwin Kumka, Councillor Axworthy, and Councillor Randall. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, adoption of the agenda, be it resolved, the agenda be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? Erwin, thank you. Um, Ian, would you like to second? Sure. Thank you. Any additions? Steve, you're muted. There you go. Um, so the resolution of which council agreed to last um, council meeting to have on the agenda verbatim has been removed. So mm -hmm. I would like that to be put back onto the agenda. It's still on the agenda, Steve. I left it on, Steve. The census for the ORVs. Is it? That's right number eight. Eight H. Ah, okay. Sorry, my fault. I apologize. Okay. Anything else, gentlemen? No. Nope. Hearing, hearing nothing further. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, all right. Moving on to the minutes of the March 21st regular council meeting. Be it resolved, the minutes of the March 21st, 2023 regular council meeting be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? Ian, thank you. Second. Graham, thank you. Any discussion on the minutes, gentlemen? Yep, they look good to me. Look good to me. All right, all those in favor? All right. Carried, thank you. All right, we are moving on to a hearing uh, under the authority of the Planning Act. A public hearing is being held tonight to receive representations from any interested persons with respect to the following matter, application 2023-002, for variation order under the VB Planning Scheme 1969 as amended to allow for subdivision and land sale for future development of a fiber optic communication facility. Um, all of this information was published in the free press. That's correct, yep. And uh, under the Planning Act, with the required amount of time, Etc. I am told we've received no. Didn't hear anything. Nothing from any of our residents. Just so everyone knows, we are varying a lot with uh, in the SRR district from 150 feet to 69 feet, and varying the minimum site area requirements from one acre to 0.27 acres, and it is on Arthur Road just east of the MTS building and it is for Valley Fibers building for their infrastructure. That right. is the purpose of this subdivision. Yep. Uh, so again, we did not receive any any comments one way or another on this. Is there any discussion from council? I think if anything, people would be cheering. Someone did actually at the last council meeting, they started to clap when we mentioned <laughs> yeah. it. Oh, it's getting closer. What's the procedure on this, uh, 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 Penny? Do we uh, well, vote to uh, pass the application? Well, this is still the public hearing portion, so yeah. once you close it, then you vote on the resolution. I see. So if, okay. there's, no, if there's no further discussion or questions or queries on it, I no. will close the public hearing. Okay. All right, thank you. And... Straight to the Go straight to the resolution. All right. So be it resolved to approve variation application 2023-002, varying the minimum lot width and minimum site area requirements in the SRR district to allow for subdivision and land sale for future development of a fiber optic communication facility. Number one, to vary the minimum lot width from 150 to 69 feet and to vary the minimum site area requirements from one acre to 0.27 of an acre. May I have a mover? I'll move that. 
Graham, thank you. Second, Steve, will you second that? Thank you. Any further discussion, gentlemen? I think it's very clear. All right, all those in favor? All right. Carried, thank you. Oh, easy. Mm -hmm. do, do we have any update as to when Valley Fiber might start to work? I haven't heard anything from them at all in the last few weeks, but I'll touch base with them tomorrow. Okay. See what's going on. How far are they along? Are they in the RM? Mm, no. I don't think they're up there, but they're, they're heavily there. planning. I know they were contacting me quite a bit. But are they up at like in Bel Air or? Oh, I don't know where they are. Oh, they subcontract out a lot all over the province okay. to do their stuff. So I don't. Yeah, I see vehicles along the highway, but I don't know if it's for Valley Fiber or. I'm sure they'll be in touch. Yep. All right, thank you. So we'll go on to the committee reports, which were tabled from the last council meeting. Mm -hmm. Public works. I did have a public works report and from March 21st. So uh, regular Monday door-to-door -door garbage pickup at Easter will be on Tuesday, April 3rd. No, that was that today. Today's, today's April 4th. Tuesday, April 4th. <laughs> That's just when, to so it would be next week then. April next 11th Tuesday. Would be Tuesday. April 11th. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, is the office closed Friday and Friday Monday? And Monday. And Monday. Yeah. Both offices, public works and here. I would assume so because it's uh, that's government. Yeah. Okay. And it's full wide. Okay. So regular Monday door to door garbage pickup will be Tuesday, April 11th. Bins will be emptied as needed. Our new garbage and recycling area should be operational by the end of June. Uh, preparation includes dismantling and rebuilding the ramp to access the GFL recycle bins for commingled materials. All large green garbage bins in the area will be removed and installed into the enclosure. A small building with an office for staff will be moved into the area. We expect dump passes, which are re will be required to be sent out with tax notices. I hope so. We hope so. When do those um, tax notices go out? Uh, the public hearings early May. We won't hear back. Early June, I'm hoping that we get them in the mail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we send the water bills out earlier than that, though, I think. Send the water bills out separately. Yeah. So, and how many passes do, uh, does a house get? get? They recommended one, one, yeah. one pass, and it needs to be numbered. I was wondering if maybe putting their tax roll number on it would be a good idea. Yeah, Tammy not. has an idea because okay. they already have passes that we have created for other things. Which is doing something similar, and I think that'll work well initially. They just so. want them; they want them numbered, right, so they can track who's coming. Yep, in. exactly. Yeah. Make sure they're president. So I like that. Use it. They have to pay for second yeah. one, I think. Those are details we still need to work out okay. a little bit, but mostly it's an admin thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fees for dumping waste, such as furniture and appliances, will be posted. A reminder for those coming out in the winter, windrows will be removed by request, 48 hours notice. Please call Public Works 756-2286. Road maintenance continues, including plowing, grading, sanding, and hauling snow, and removing windrows on request. Regular maintenance startup procedures will soon be starting at the VB water plant and the Albert Beach pump house. Steaming of culverts has begun. Preventative maintenance is ongoing on all municipal equipment. As always, e-service requests can be made from the RM of the Victoria Beach webpage. Employment opportunities for positions of public works have been posted on the website. They can be found under the government tab. And uh, one addition to the March report, the 2022 annual water, water report was submitted on March 15th for the VB 8th Avenue plant. The report was reviewed and meets all requirements of Section 32 of the Drinking Water Safety Regulation. And that is the Public Works report, and I can say that tell you that all those cement Lego blocks yeah. were delivered today. Yeah. So what they, are they for? They are to build the ramp for the recycling oh, and right. to cordon off some areas. They have good. They have plans for that area. They're going to plant some trees and. They're busy cleaning it up. They're really working hard. They're doing a great job. It looks a lot tidier. It does. For anybody asking, what are they, they going to do with the old bus? <clears throat> the long-term plans are to replant trees along there, so yeah. it's not visible to the road again. Yeah. But they had to move them because yeah. they were just not in the right spot. For 
Sorry, you're <clears throat> we're asking about the old bus. I'm not the sure. The old bus, yes. I'm not sure what the plan is for that. They've got several vehicles in the back that they need to yeah. do something with. Do they work? No. Yeah. They're just for parts. I don't know. All right, that's public works <clears> on <throat> finance, Ian. So this is, um, I guess, as of December 31st. That's the one I've got. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you're looking at. Um, Those are the financial the statements. Operating fund. I have the budget too somewhere here. Yeah. Preliminary okay. budget. Um, I think you said it was up 2.3 percent, 2.38 was it? 2.89. Yeah. 2.89. Okay. The proposed one for this year. Yeah. yeah. So that would be uh, sort of mill rate was what 14.569. I don't have it on okay. memory, but that sounds correct. Yeah. Okay. I think so. so, I mean, I think it looks fine. I, I, I don't know if anybody has any other comments on, on this, but uh, if it's around that rate, I think uh, that should be, uh, people should be happy with that. Um, it was the... Uh, Are we talking about the, the tax bylaw? Is that what no, you're 2003. We should, be, we should be talking about the February numbers. Yeah, yeah. like the it's February definitely. budget numbers. February, February actual numbers. Well, there's a couple of things here. Just because we haven't really approved the whole operating budget for the year yet, we don't really have a budget. We just look at um, there's an interim operating budget that we sort of follow, but we don't, don't follow because it changes once this is approved. But uh, we just look at the expenses to date compared to last year, and they're quite similar. They're a little bit more expensive uh, just because of the capital purchase that we've been making uh, with the uh, the storage container that we right. bought and some of the other stuff at the transfer site. Um, our taxes receivable have come down a little, quite a bit from last year, this time of year, and our cash balance is fairly similar. It's up a little compared to last year. Those are the three main things that I look at. When you uh, say tax balance, you mean people, more people have paid taxes owing? Taxes receivable that are still outstanding, okay. yes. More more people have. That's Just right. because we bumped it up a year. Because we bumped it up, right? Yeah, more, more people have paid. So, so. Good. Yeah, that's the point, right? Yeah, that's all I have. And I, I looked at the, the finances as well. They looked fine. I mean, the, nothing. But that's a little further down. But yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments on finances? Thanks, Ian. Moving on to protective services. Steve, do we have a fire report? <clears throat> uh, yes, sir. Just let me pull it up here. <clears throat> uh, so this would be for. February. Uh, so the, the fire department had a total of uh, one call out uh, for the month. The call was for a structure fire. On arrival, the owner used uh, their fire extinguisher to put out the fire. Uh, the fire was located in an exterior wall. Uh, the fire department removed some wall around the fire to make sure uh, there was no uh, uh, smoldering present in, in the wall. Uh, then there was a temporary uh, patch placed uh, uh, placed over top of it, and no one was hurt, and uh, the damage was kept to a minimum. Uh, the fire department continues to maintain and repair the equipment and gear as necessary. Train is moving forward, uh, sorry, towards uh, spring fire season, uh, towards the spring fire season, uh, in preparation for uh, an expected busy season. And we were in the fire hall on Saturday. And my gosh, it's it was so clean and neat and tidy. <laughs> I I told Brad that so he was going to pass it on. So it looked great. Erwin, do you have anything for the police report? Yes, uh, police are advised February was a quiet month. There have been no break-ins during either January or February, which is good news. Yes, um, the um, our chief constable keeps track of activities um, and the act. The activity in February, there were 86 uh, different events. That doesn't mean there were 86 problems. You know, they, they, they keep track of all their activity and that compares with 48 in 2022. Now, I don't think oh. that's really a fair um, comparison because the number of incidents and activities that were reported last year changes from this year. Um, there were uh, the police are out with their laser uh, doing speed checks. There were nine uh, events involving laser. The the UTV was out five times. And this is something new. They've they've started doing foot patrols. There were actually eight of them conducted in February. So 
are, you know, I think one of the most important things we can look for from our police department is to be visible. If the if the if the criminals out there see that the police are out and about doing things, they tend to not get involved. So I'm I'm pleased that uh, activity levels and you know again one of the things we worry about in January and February is the break-ins and so far we're good none. Right. Great. Thanks, Erwin. Yeah. How many uh, police are actually working in you know this this time of year this month? Like, is there two, three? How many officers are on on the payroll? I guess. There's, there's two. Two, okay. And they, you know, they cover off, uh, you know, 724. Okay. They're, you know, they're, they have a call yeah. system. So like right now, there's, they're working, you know, kind of a split shift. Somebody's doing the day shift and then somebody starts in, you know, late afternoon. Uh, okay, thanks. And then, and then the other person is on, is on call if they need a backup. So, so they're not around on weekends then? Yes. So they're working seven days a week. Yep. Okay. Again, it's a, it's a staggered shift system in the winter. Day, and then they're going seven days a week. That's, I mean, how many hours are they putting in? Well, as I understand it, a standard week is, I believe, don't quote me, but I believe it's 35 hours. So they're they're, they're staggering each other. Okay. There's no, in the wintertime, there's no overlap. And it's yeah. not as winter. I, you know, there there may be times when there's less coverage, shall we say? Yeah, I just yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's there's less people around too. Oh, that's yeah. not true. Okay. For for Ian's benefit, uh, for for many years, Ian, uh, we only had one constable on duty, only one person available throughout the whole winter. It was a couple of years ago we moved to two people, and uh, I would like to think that. Uh, um, the uh, the drop off in uh, in break-ins is and the uh, uh, more police presence is uh, directly attributable to that. I think we did the right thing by making sure we had two of them on duty. And it's a safety. One of, one of the real problems in the winter time when when it was just one, something bad happens. Who's your backup? You don't have any. They they would then have to call in the RCMP, and that backup could be twenty minutes away or two hours away. So. Yep. At least now we we have a system where if there if something bad's coming down, the other person off duty will actually, if they're available, will back them up. I, I'm going by memory here, but um, when we were at uh, Alexandra talking to council, were they not talking about something about somehow the police could work together, mm -hmm. to overlap? Uh, I don't know if anything. No, was that's discussed. that's very much at at a conceptual state. I think I think Alexander wanted to have some discussions amongst their own council uh, you know it, it it might it it's possible you know we're we're so far away from that uh, you know there's there's been no there's been no detailed analysis done so i think it's kind of it was kind of when i talked to the the fellows after the meeting they said well we got to work on that and then we'll get back to you yeah so i and think they were the ones that wanted more service right so they were mm -hmm. thinking of tapping into our police and and fire department as well or at least yeah. open it up for discussion well, we already have a sharing arrangement on fire well, that's and true. and if there is if there is a, a call a serious call in alexander or the rcmp will call us out and we we have been cooperating with them mm -hmm. okay. all right thank you that's good thanks uh move on to special events i have had two requests for the use of the vincent memorial for the bike to the beach and the walk to the water Walk for Water events. Um, I've updated the 2023 Vincent Memorial form and I'll send that off to the two event coordinators. It's on our website, I think. Tam or our, I, I asked Tammy to have a look at it. I'm not sure if she put it on the website. Okay. Can't remember if I asked her to do that, but it has been updated. Are these the same two that pop up every year? Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. Good. They're very both really well attended events and both really well organized. So um golf course Nothing anything new. happening <laughs> no no maybe there's a couple of uh cross country ski tracks on the truck on the uh, fairways but that's about it <laughs> all right thanks graham municipal buildings uh municipal buildings now keep in mind this is the uh 
the February report that should have been uh, presented March 21st, but we had to uh, bring it forward. On uh, the subject of police buildings, the order has been placed for CCAN to house the police ATV. Public Works are cooperating with removal of the dismantled roof structure at the earliest possible date uh, to make way for the uh, gravel pad to accommodate uh, the container. Uh, secondly, prices have been obtained uh, for uh, uh, basic hydro service to the container uh, and to add a, uh, a man door. Uh, thirdly, prices have been obtained to upgrade hydro and seasonal water service to the barracks uh, for year-round service. And an office building has been ordered uh, for the waste and recycle employee uh, who will be hired uh, to meet the terms of our uh, waste and recycling permit. Uh, different subject, the VB store. A contractor has been contacted uh, to quote on some ceiling joint repairs. I've been discussing this with uh, Lise and at the appropriate time we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll go there and uh, and uh, get the quote. Um, up until now, um, uh, uh, Safi's operation of the VB store might have been open to question, but I think that'll be uh, uh, resolved uh, later on with this evening's proceedings. Uh, and uh, the Albert Beach Accessibility Project. Uh, given the time extension that we've received from the grant authority, uh, Waste Backo and the excavating expects to compete, uh, complete the site prep in April or May, which will be followed by holding tank installation and construction of the toilet facility. I've been in touch with uh, uh, Wolf Carcraft, the uh, the uh, contractor. As a matter of fact, I'm meeting with him uh, later this week to review the uh, 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 Bayview Number Four and the uh, the new uh, Village Green washroom as well as the uh, accessibility structure over at Albert Beach. Um, there'll be lots of new and interesting uh, items that have uh, uh, popped up in the interim and they'll, they will appear on my, uh, on my report at the second meeting of this month. So that's it for municipal buildings. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Any questions? Um, I think Steve had a question on Saturday about um, the water, the well, I guess, uh, the color of the water. I don't know if that's under buildings or what that's under. Um, oh, the well at the fire department? Yeah. yeah. The, fire department? yeah the water's a bit yellow, I guess. I, I, I assume that's sand. But, it's iron. It's iron? It's iron. Oh, it's iron? Uh, <laughs> it's iron and sediment. Isn't there I, a, I, replied, I replied to Steve and there was copies went to everybody. I've made a... Uh, uh, a suggestion on that uh, score. As a matter of fact, it's the second and third time I've suggested that we uh, enlist the services of a water quality specialist to take a look and provide some recommendations and some uh, uh, suggestion for uh, for Trevor's benefit. Uh, um, it, it's it's not going away. Uh, it, I think it's. I agree with Steve. It's embarrassing for us to continue to ignore it. But that's up to council whether um, whether we want to engage the uh, services of a water specialist or not. Um, no offense to our plumbing friends, but these people have uh, explained to me that the last person in the world you want to talk to about water quality is a plumber. Enough said. Is there um, a water softener that's used before that water comes out the tap? No. They have a water softener, but they don't use it. It's it's fallen into disrepair in the upper level of the the public works building. Um, I I think the uh, the sediment and the discoloration may go uh, uh, beyond the scope of what a a softener could uh, could handle, and uh, we don't. Um, you know, rather than a lot of a lot of amateur uh, speculation, why don't we? Uh, uh, these people would come out and look for a couple of hundred dollars and give us uh, an assessment, which may be beyond our means, but uh, might might not be. But uh, that was the basis of uh, of my reply to uh, uh, Steve's email because I agree with him. I am. Um, I just had one point across. Go ahead, Owen. I say let let's uh, look into a water specialist and get some estimates of what's involved to solve the problem. Because I, well, I, I do that in conjunction with Trevor. Yeah. 
There's, I had someone come out to my house because I had the same issue. I have a well and there's a lot of iron in the water and there's a lot of uh, yellowness and all of that. So I called up Colligan, which is a, it's a national um, water company and they had a specialist and the guy came out to my house for free uh, and then uh, gave me uh, a full review of it, tested the water and then gave me a list of all the things that I could do to solve the problem. So if there's, if you want to try that, uh, that's that's their business, right? They are. Yeah, the, the one I have in mind, uh, I've dealt with them uh, myself, and I've had uh, uh, communication with them on uh, on several occasions over the last few years. So they're quite willing to come out and uh, and uh, and uh, take a look. Uh, Ian, did your uh, water situation did it, it involve uh, the rotten eggs, uh, smelly hot water? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you and I had talked about the uh, solution that my specialist proposed for that, uh, an air infuser, but that's beyond the scope of this of, of this discussion. Uh, Just but, take uh, the anode out of your hot water tank. Yeah. That. So that. But the air infuser and the uh, the water softener, those two things could solve the problem. Uh, I'm not expecting. But then you have to I have my place. Where, yeah. where the water would be there for mm -hmm. to come out the tap. Right. But to get back to the point at hand, uh, we're not sure that those are the problems with the uh, uh, water at the fire hall. Remember that the uh, well at the fire hall was abandoned years ago. The fire hall draws its water from the, the newer well uh, close to the uh, public works building. So whatever, whatever nasty things are going on there is eventually going to affect the permanent water hookup to the barracks. And Arnie's already had to deal with substandard water all winter long. Yeah. Steve? Just a quick point of order. I think that we have a uh, plan going forward. So uh, this is going a little bit outside of the reports. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Thank Let's you. Get back on track. Back on track then. We will go to the doctor's committee, Steve. Uh, so letters have been sent uh, to prospective doctors to occupy the doctor's uh, office for the uh, coming season. As the committee has done an exemplary job in the past, I have full confidence in their ability to locate and fill uh, the doctor's schedule um, of 2023. It may also be worth considering, given that our permanent resident population increased uh, from 2016 to 2021 uh, by 73.11%, and that our weekend year, uh, year round residency has clearly increased substantially, that we consider expanding the doctor's season by an additional week on one or both ends. Again, only something for consideration. Um, we, will be, uh, we'll, we will be acquiring two air purifiers for the office. One will be located in the waiting room and the other in the office itself. This will add to the protection of residents uh, when accessing um, medical treatment in Victoria Beach. I, I would also note that originally I sent to council that we would be uh, looking at possibly three air purifiers, but it was generally agreed to that uh, two would be uh, more than sufficient uh, given how much they can uh, purify. Um, uh, I've also forwarded, uh, forwarded the, or sorry, the, uh, the committee has also forwarded uh, the final uh, doctor's report to the uh, 2022, or sorry, for the 2022 season to the office uh, with their support in order uh, to ensure that all items have been purchased for the coming season. Okay. Any comment? No. Questions or comments for, for Steve? Um, just one comment, Steve. Uh, it's around about uh, April or May of every year. Um, uh, there's a list of, uh, of uh, mechanical uh, errors or problems or deficiencies associated with the doctor's uh, cottage which I attempt to resolve through my uh, municipal billings portfolio have you got a laundry list from the doctor's committee yet of what what needs doing at the doctor's office uh, nothing uh, nothing beyond what was in their final report um, yeah, I haven't, to ever I haven't seen, seen that yet uh, so I, I had sent it off uh, when I uh, when I had re originally received it uh, I suppose about six months ago or so, um, but I also attached it as I as I mentioned uh, in that uh, report that I uh, had, uh, had just given. So it should be in your email. Okay, thank you. Um, I like to try and deal with any of the little items that show up because they uh, they come back to haunt us later, as you know. Graham, Graham, we did quite a bit of work in the last three years on the doctors, you know, 
Yeah, oh yeah, you, we did we did quite a bit every and, year. And the you, place gets better. You did a you did a great job coordinating that. So much appreciated. Thank you. Um, uh, I just want to make sure that we stay stay ahead on uh, anything that might be on the list for uh, for this year. Yeah, I, I think we did everything we were asked to do last year. Everything, and maybe a little bit more besides. But that's what we should be doing. I'm not, I'm not sure putting an air purifier in the waiting room is a good idea. I mean, that waiting room's got so many holes in it, you'll be pulling in a whole bunch of fresh air and cleaning it. Certainly makes sense for the the, the uh, examination area and maybe even the living quarters as opposed to the uh, waiting room. Well, let's go well, in, inside the waiting room. We have um, multiple sick people in a very small space. So um, again, it just adds to the protection for um everybody who's there i mean the last thing that you, you you want is for a case of let's just say covid um to get from one person from another and then very easily being able to trace back to the doctor's office and being seen that well you could have put a uh air purifier in there so if we have it it offers a little bit of protection well actually it offers a decent amount of protection for everybody in the room obviously the windows are typically open uh every so often they're down uh if, it, if it's raining outside um, so it's just an added level of protection for residents. Um, and yes, you're right. Inside of the actual office itself, it makes perfect sense because then you're helping to protect the doctor. All right. Thank you. Did you have a comment or you just move along? Okay. Well, uh, you said there was something submitted to the office where they request that they want it. I don't know if I saw it. Was it submitted recently or? Uh, so their their original final 2022 report, uh, I had forwarded off. Oh, and okay. then uh, with the report that I just gave, um, I, I guess about a, an, an hour ago, I also attached that to that report that I, uh, that I just gave, uh, gave to you. So it okay. should be in your inbox as well, just to, as a follow-up. I know that we've, that we've addressed a lot of these issues, but there are still some purchases um, that, that need to be done. So um, it's just better that we have them there and we can just go through and check everything off, uh, off to make sure that everything has been done. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Communications. Yeah, it's here now. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Communications. Um, been a little quiet on our communication. We need to wrap that up. We've got a couple issues that people need to be aware of. So we'll get something up either out to residents or on our Facebook page or on the website, but in good time. Um, Summer Information Office, I understand that we are staffed. That's correct. Which is fantastic. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Where's the office? Uh, you know, when you come in the where the arch, the arch is, right. there's a little summer office there. If you need a pass, you stop in oh, there. Oh, I see. It's yeah. the person that's across in the parking lot. Here. Yeah, there's three, three, four. four, four people who man that. It's open eight to eight three. every day during this restricted season. So. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Um, building inspector Graham. Um, I have the uh, report for the month of February from uh, Curtis uh, Bodwin. Um, not a lot of activity. There was uh, two permits for main structures, one for a guest house, one shed, and one demo. The uh, value of the permits was four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Uh, and the permit fees were $4,987. Uh, year to date is lagging somewhat behind uh, uh, last year, but we have a expectation it's going to pick up smartly. Uh, permits year to date, $745,000. And the fees we've collected are $7,800. Uh, and thank you for uh, uh, to uh, Curtis for his uh, submission of that. And that's building reports, building steps. Thank you. Uh, accessibility, I am getting quotes on mobility mats for the Albert Beach washroom project and Rod Bowman and I went and measured there a week or so ago. Um, coming up is a public forum for the five-year review of the Accessibility for Manitobans Act on May 15th uh, from 1 till 3.30 at Viscount Gort. Um, I can put that on another agenda. I'd like permission to attend that forum. Uh, 
that's it for accessibility, I think. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Heritage Trails, Steve? Uh, so, uh, for Heritage, again, um, if you think that there's anybody in the uh, community that uh, deserves your uh, or deserves recognition for their volunteer efforts, uh, there is volunteer uh, award page on the uh, website, so please go fill it out. Um, in terms of trails, uh, yesterday the, uh, the, uh, the ski trails uh, were groomed after the snowfall. Um, they are now in good condition. There is insufficient snow, however, on the golf course, so that is unfortunately now closed. Um, they also had uh, minimal snowfall uh, in recent weeks, so the trails have been getting a little bit dirty with uh, forest uh, detritus. Uh, so uh, they have been uh, very grateful for the recent um, and any fresh uh, fresh snow to extend uh, extend the season. Although, from what Graham tells me, the snow still hasn't started. So we'll see yeah. how that goes. Uh, overall, it was a very successful ski season, and grooming of the trails was appreciated uh, by many skiers. So they honestly do a phenomenal job, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for trails. Um, yeah. Just overall, though, for heritage and trails, I, again, I would really appreciate if we can uh, start using our uh, website to uh, full effect. I know that with uh, heritage, given that there is a um, uh, the, the local museum now has the ability for people to submit online, which is what I had been previously asking for, um, then that may be somewhat redundant, but I think that there still is uh, a place for it for uh, Victoria Beach. Um, but I would like to get something like that up and running for, uh, for the uh, municipality. Also with trails, um, again, it would be ex exceptionally um, advantageous to have a trails page where volunteers can go register um it and we can actually send people out properly as to where the issues are and also, and it would, that would also help support with uh public works in terms of where they're uh, in terms of where there are issues but again um these are issues that we can fix very simply with the website and i'm really asking that uh, we nail this down sooner than later because again it's been coming up for about well the last two terms so um, I can add that uh, it's on our website and it's uh, on our Facebook page that the Benchmark uh, Art Project was awarded um, and it's on our website. You can go have a look and see what the winning entry was. It was a really interesting process. There were 33 entries, they need 10, 10 people and four, four others in the room who were involved in the process in the, in the project so couldn't vote. Uh, went through all the entries, we narrowed it down to 10, then we narrowed it down to 5, then we narrowed it down to 3, and then we narrowed it down to the 1, and there was a lot of criteria uh, that the winner, you know, that, that we would hope the winner would meet, and that was longevity, ease of getting it into the trails, lack of, uh, or, or little dis disruption to the trails, etc. So, uh, I'm, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what the residents think when it pops up in the summer and we'll let people know when it's coming so that there's we don't know we don't know it'll yeah. be sometime this summer yeah so it was an interesting process um anything further on reports uh, be resolved to accept the monthly committee reports as presented may I have a mover ian thank you second graham thank you <laughs> any further comments all those in favor? Aye. Thank you. And our March reports will be on the next one, correct? Yep, exactly. At our next meeting. Yep. Moving that was on actually to going to be one of my uh, questions as to whether or not we were starting some sort of different time frame for these. But. Well, remember we had to table these February ones because there was just... We just ran out of time. We ran out of time. All right, moving on to accounts <clears throat> and finances. Be it resolved the following list of accounts be approved for payment. Accounts payable checks 11075 to 11096 in the amount of $69,824.15. Credit card balance due in the amount of $3,409.84. February gross payroll in the amount of $89,530.45. March gross payroll in the amount of $140,000. 
$581.63. May I have a mover? Ian, thank you. Second? Steve, thank you. Ian, any comments? Uh, as you mentioned, the, the total is 61,013, um, 35 checks, uh, four larger uh, expenditures. One was the uh, police container for $10,623. Uh, Manitoba Hydro bill was sixty-one thirty-six. Uh, um, oh, Napier Emergency Consulting that was fifty-two fifty, and then the ten thousand for the RN of Alexander. So everything looks fine. Any comments? Yep. yep. No. All right. Thank you, Ian. All those in favor? All right. Carrie, thank you. I suppose only just while while I think about it real quick is just uh, a clar clarification is that if uh, the uh, Napier Consulting is not uh, anything that relates to uh, for our emergency consultants. So uh, you got a fire going on at your place? Oh, you've heard the toast. <laughs> I just wasn't in the place for a fire for a fire alarm ever, but anyway, and everything's fine. Um, anyway, I was, I was just going to say that it's not, uh, it's nothing legal. It is for our, uh, our, for our emergency coordinator, uh, our consultant, and she does a phenomenal job. And um, yeah, so. Nothing. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, moving on, nothing from business arising. Moving on to other business, a dump box purchase. Be it resolved to approve the expenditure for a dump box as quoted by Fort Gary Industries in the amount of $19,945 as attached in Schedule A. We have a mover. Ian, thank you. Second. Steve, thank you. Uh, this dump box is, is required for public works. We're asking to do more brush pickup. We've got more garbage issues that we're going to be dealing with. They did try and get three quotes. Um, That's the one couldn't get it. No, couldn't we've, get yeah, he asked. Uh, for these types of things, it's hard to get three quotes because right. it's so specific. aftermarket and specific, and Absolutely. not everybody wants to do it. So, if you're happy to get one and it looks affordable and reasonable, you... That's the one they want to. So, yeah, yeah they've been looking all year for it. They've been talking to me for a while. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any com Any comments on this? Well, we knew this was coming. Uh, it, it was. It's required for uh, our most most recent uh, dump truck addition to the fleet. Uh, so this is just a natural extension of uh, uh, of that uh, to make the truck just that much more usable. All right. Thank you. Any further comments? All those in favor? All right. Carried. Thank you. Tax bylaw 1640, first reading. Be it resolved that bylaw 1640, fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2023, be given first reading. May I have a mover? Ian, thank you. Second? Steve, thank you. Discussion? This came after two or three days of discussion. Yeah, yeah, pretty good discussion with council. Mm -hmm. We had well, I'll just speak to it. I mean, we had the department heads come and speak to us too, and spend some time saying the, what their needs were and what they thought we should spend this year to deliver the value and the service that they need to get done this year. So mm -hmm. it was really good. Mm -hmm. just in different ways, and the province surprised us by giving an extra lump of operating uh, operating grant. So that helped quite a bit keep the taxes. Down to the 2.83 percent that we're shooting for instead of the six to eight percent that we were mm -hmm. looking at. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Worked out well. yeah, we went through this every way and back and forth. We did some uh, trimming, and then the uh, province stepped in and kind of made our jobs a little bit easier for us. So we've got a a, a really very small tax increase, and yet uh, uh, we haven't had to eliminate any. Uh, anything essential from uh, our budget so it uh, it looks good to looks good to us yeah steve um so bond ended up uh sort of alleviating some of my concerns about our buying power which is is always my uh, biggest concern when it really comes to uh um, taxation and and trying to increase by inflation so um 
like we have council has had to out of necessity increase taxes slightly above inflation give or take uh, uh pretty much every year for the last multiple years um this this is a result of a whole bunch of different uh, issues that have, that have come up um so right now we're sitting at about 2.89 percent um i would note that winnipeg has gone up by 3.5 percent and while if you take a look at the at, at our five-year history it basically puts us in line with inflation so that we're not really losing any buying power canadian inflation went up by 5.9 percent this year which again overall we're not really losing too much buying power as, as Lon had pointed out in, in his previous emails but right now we're on track to hit 5.2 percent for uh this this next coming year which means that we might be in a position where we are starting to lose that buying power and opec has now stated that they are going to start reducing uh the oil uh, oil flow so oh, sorry oil oil, uh, oil oil production so while my concerns have been alleviated a lot from what uh, Lon has pointed out, I am I am still concerned, given that inflation is still so high, it hasn't fallen off a cliff like a lot of people thought that it would to try to go back to normal, and the fact that OPEC is starting to look at cutting production again, it looks as though like more than 2.1% is here to stay for a little bit. So I, I am concerned um, that we're only sitting at 2.89% uh, and Winnipeg is going up by 3.5%. understand that they're a different community, but we also have some fairly major expenses coming down the road um, that they're not options, they're necessities. So my real concern right now is trying to keep up in a sustainable way with inflation. And I think that at least going up to 3% might be um advisable if not by somewhere around that sort of 3.5 percent mark and i know that a lot of municipalities are, are are they're struggling with that type of a decision but i think for us long term we really need to be looking at sort of a, a slightly larger increase i don't like it nobody likes paying taxes but you know for our finances long-term finances I, I think it would be wise Thanks, Erwin. You know, I think we're missing an interesting opportunity here. Um, the government came in with some extra cash, which certainly helped. Um, we know we've got some major expenditures coming down in the next few years, the fire truck, uh, fire hall, uh, housing issue. You know, if we were to raise taxes by three and a half, maybe even 4% or maybe 3.9%, the impact of the average individual in the municipality is still fairly minor, but we could use that extra cash to increase. And I would, my suggestion would be to increase the equipment reserve because we know, I mean, today, Lon and I were looking at a new fire truck, $600,000 for a base model, you know? Um, so, you know, we, we could use this situation where uh, our, our, our we could we could we could charge a little more in tax and create put more money away because when it comes time to buy that that fire truck at seven hundred thousand dollars we're going to have to go out and borrow some money to pay for it uh, we don't have seven hundred thousand in our in our equipment reserve account but if we could set aside another uh, you know i don't know what the tax increase say at 3.9 percent would generate an extra revenue and i see lawns just stepped away but th th this is a this is a, an interesting window of opportunity that we're missing uh, we're going to get a little flack if we increase taxes to 3.9 percent but in two years when we have to increase taxes by seven or eight percent to pay for, for the fire truck and the other things that, that are coming down um that's going to be pretty serious too so you know, when you know you're you're you've got expenditures coming down in the future, well, you save for it now. Save a few dollars now. So, are you saying increase the equipment reserve? That's another bylaw, is it not? No. No. You can, no. You can just tax more this year and put it into the reserve. It's up to you. 
Juan, what would if, if we increase the the reserve by a hundred thousand dollars? What what does that what impact does that have on our on our on our taxes? Another four percent. Well, if you add another fifteen thousand to the budget, you go from two point eight to three point five percent. So that's point seven percent. That's fifteen thousand. So that's, multiply that's that by six. Dollars. So it'd go up by four or five percent, probably six or seven percent increase. Oh no. You know, well, that, that, I suggest we target why. that under, under just under four percent, and and whatever whatever that um, that number is, that so difference, target it into the reserve account. Percent or half percent? Point seven percent. Fifteen thousand. Okay. Okay. You just you did raise taxes last year over eight percent, right. and I don't think that was inflation um, for twenty twenty. Last year was nine and a half percent. Yeah, we've raised taxes by more than the amount of inflation for the last couple of years because we. We had to, to pay for ongoing commitments. Uh, this was our chance to uh, raise taxes by less than the uh, rate of inflation. For sure. I, I mean, like as as I said, if you t if you take uh, and I believe that Lon had uh, taken the last five years, if I if I remember correctly, and averaged them out, um, then we're coming to just within, if not just slightly over uh, what inflation was, unless I I got those numbers incorrect. No, oh, you're right. Yeah, that was about it. Slightly over inflation. Okay. So, yeah. So right now, because of what we have done in the past, we're in we're in a good position for our buying power as it stands. My big concern is next year, given that right now what we're seeing is that inflation is increasing so rapidly. I think we just lost Graham, but inflation is increasing. Or sorry, it's still so high that we might be in a position next year where we're losing that buying power. And we don't have the um, the ability to buy what it is that we that we set aside for now. Erwin will remember this, and Penny, you'll you'll remember this. But last year, one of the reasons why um, our taxes did go up so high was so that we could put a second um, kind of second hundred thousand dollars into our reserves in um, in a move, so then that way we can save up for these major purchases. So I'm not necessarily say, necessarily saying that we do increase by 100% again. I'm just simply saying that we look to have that 3.5% that Winnipeg had it, and try to be as fiscally conservative as possible when it comes to the budget. So that way we can start putting a little bit more money away and a little bit more money away. And that way right. next year, if inflation really is sticking around 5.2% or even higher again with this with this move by OPEC, then that's going to allow us to be in a much more secure place rather than exactly as Erwin said, suddenly saying that we have to have another increase of 8%, um, you know, in, in three years because we didn't look to the future. So that that's my concern right now. So well, remember, you know, inflation, you know, is, is going to hopefully slow down, but we're not going to have deflation. We're, we're stuck with some high prices going forward because you know, deflation just doesn't happen. Our cost of operations are going up. Uh, we were able to trim things this year, and I, I, I commend the administration for, for you know, excellent cost control. But as I say, I, I just think this is a window of opportunity that uh, we don't often get a chance to increase our reserves and not create too much pain. And we don't right. have to make a decision now, obviously, because this is just to discuss the, the bylaw, but I'm just saying that it's something that we do actively need to consider. And I, I appreciate having this opportunity to have this discussion in public because, you know, it, it really is something that that as, as a community itself, we don't like talking about. And as I said, nobody likes to pay taxes. But the reality is exactly we have we have a fire truck coming up. Um, we have to. Uh, get a new um, uh, uh, building for it for the fire hall. Uh, we have we have so many major costs coming down the road, which it's not an end of a but, and they're not even things that you know we would like to have. It's things that are absolutely 100 percent necessary to have. Just just to comment on the fire truck, uh, sooner or later, if we don't replace that truck, then uh, the underwriters will change our rating classification uh, <clears throat> and that could cost every cottage owner 30 to 40 percent more on their insurance than what they're paying so you know if the fire truck is not optional we we got to do it sooner or later 
and let's set aside as much money we, this year as we can. Thank you, Graham. Uh, just a comment. Um, uh, we've always tried to come up with the smallest possible tax increase we could live with. That's that, that's been our guiding light as we fight over every uh, uh, nickel and dime. But uh, a lot of our residents uh, are quite capable of recognizing that this could be a false saving. And maybe now is the time to uh, uh, aim for uh, something like 3.9, so we at least uh, gain a, a few points against what happens down the road. I, I think it's uh, it's fruitless for us to speculate on uh, what OPEC's going to do last week, this week, or next week. They're all over the map. But uh, Irwin's point uh, that nobody can point to an example of deflation in the last 50 years, so uh, <laughs> the price of things is not going to go down. Well, if you wanted to put another 25,000 into your equipment reserve, that would bump up taxes to about anywhere between 3.8 and 4% increase. That's another 25,000 into savings. Well, as a matter of principle, uh, I like yeah, a little bit less than 4%. <laughs> 3.99? 23,437 dollars 20 Something like that. Um, <laughs> I'd like to hear from the other uh, the other counselors. Do you want to stick with the two point eight nine, or should we, or should we uh, go for uh, a little more? Uh, well, well, the getting's good. Well, Any you haven't I commented? I mean, if all we're doing is building up a reserve, why don't we go for ten percent? <gasps> No. Uh, no, no, I'm going to get no. you to answer. It's, not, it's not that we need yeah. the money. We're just no, simply yeah. saying we're, we're just simply money. saying we want to bump up the reserve. So why don't we go for 10 percent? Okay. Well, I mean, what what I'm trying to promote is is a a gradual increase in reserves, so we don't have to have the big hit when it comes to I mean, if we have to borrow the money at increased interest costs now. That's going to that's going to put additional burden on 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 our taxpayers because somebody's got to pay the interest. And we have to borrow it. So, you are putting quite a mo good amount of uh, money into your reserves every year. You have hundred thousand dollars a year that you allocate for the general reserve, which is very nice, and another two hundred a year into your equipment reserve. So, so three hundred is being added every year. Yes. Yeah. So by so the time we, you, we've been we've been, been spending truck, nearly that too. You'll have another six hundred thousand in your equipment reserve. If we don't spend it. Well, but even still, I mean, we're two three years a year, and yes. we don't spend it. Oh uh, yeah, you do. You buy the. We have been. Uh, We've been spending money. Did we spend the whole three hundred thousand? Pretty close. Uh, oh, no, yeah. not we only, we only had a surplus uh, of about seventy thousand dollars. So there's yeah. always just and the RPM at the end. Yes, that's but you know that's a good point as far as the um, the the big items that come up. That transfer station is what two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes, good. Yeah, we didn't guess. We didn't plan for that, or you didn't plan for that because I wasn't around. We, <clears throat> but you came up with the money, right? So that's that's your point. If you're going to add three hundred thousand dollars every year, when it comes time to buy the fire truck, you know it's uh, I don't know if it's next year or three years from now. But uh, <clears throat> but we we have been spending a fair bit of money on assets each year, um, so that we're not or, or the net gain in reserve is not three hundred thousand each year. But they're still in that game. You're you're investing in the long-term assets for sure. So, like your overall net surplus for last year was huge because you invested in like the bakery property. All that grant money went into long-term assets, uh, the RTM, the waste depot. Right. All that is you know is ten to twenty year capital assets. Correct. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, Steve. Uh, this is the last point that I'm going to be uh, making on this. Is just it. It's essentially just echoing what uh, what Erwin and Graham were, were alluding to, which is that every year we have been really heavily assaulting our um, uh, our, our reserves. So um, it is, you know, yes, it sounds like a lot um, in terms of what we're putting away, but we are spending that because for so long we didn't purchase the assets of which we needed as they were starting to break down on us. And these and these major costs do keep coming up, and we haven't had to go into debt because we've been trying to be as fiscally responsible as possible. And exactly as everyone said, um, that three hundred thousand doesn't just sit there 
a lot of it gets used up. So yes, we're, you know, we increase our reserve just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, uh, because we're using so much up, but you know, we need to do everything we can to try to limit the burden on the taxpayer in the short and long term. And so this is a very small, very small pain, especially given how, how high inflation has been um, for a very long term uh, gain. Lon, what would a hundred thousand dollar increase to the current taxes mean? A hundred thousand dollars? Oh, I did you feel that? Four percent. So that's another one point two times that by four. It gets you back up to seven or eight percent. If you just, I think you need to agree on how much you want to raise taxes by. So if you want to do three point eight three percent, then well, just Steve, put that. Steve's then just put that. about three point five, right? The oh, match, I don't okay. know. No. That's what, that's what he said initially. If you can agree on that, we'll just put the balance into the equivalent reserve or general reserve, whatever you want to do. Yeah, no, it's... I can live with 3.5. I can't live with 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I simply cannot. Yeah. And I think our residents will right. either. Yep, I get the short term and the long term, and I know we have expenses coming up. Um, but, you know, that's that's just too much of a hit. Can, yep. give them Should, we vote? Should we vote on the 3.5? I'm 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 just I'm just uh, saying 3.5 percent. So yeah. that, that that's exactly what I what I was saying. Well, I promoted that yeah. at the outset. Um, yeah. Madam Mayor, uh, what's the procedure here? Should we vote on this or what? I'm a little flummoxed. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you have two more so readings. You just let me know. You can pass it like this if you. We can pass this reading. Or you can also make a or amend it. A you can make an amendment right now if you want to. If somebody wants to move it to just yeah. I would to raise taxes to three point five percent, and then I would just work the budget around that. Yeah, we vote, we put forward an amendment. We vote on the amendment, and then we vote on the amended. Yep. So who would like to move? Uh, so the, I'm assuming the amendment will be to. Uh, Fix the rate of taxation for the year 2023 to 3.5%. Yes, that one. <laughs> Erwin? Yep. Thank you. Second? Steve. There you go. All right. All those in favor of the amendment? All right. Penny? Okay. I'm out. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Carried? That's it. Great. Now you vote on the first reading of the amendment. Yep. So the first bylaw was the This does somebody have their phone on? And on and... Yeah, I just need to mute yourself. Or mute yourself. We've got a real echo. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved that bylaw 1640 fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2023. Do you want me to add in? I would say be given first reading as amended. Be That's given first do. reading as amended. Um, may, so do I need to? We've already moved as it. amended to increase taxes by 3.5 percent and adjust. That's fine. Just leave. Okay. So just leave it yeah. as amended. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't we Let's allowed to second it? two readings together and then not you, in this one though. yeah you can do the second reading now you just have to have a public hearing before you do the final reading yeah you can only do two readings i think better. that's you i think you pointed that in the bylaw right that you can do two i mean why do we do two since we all agree and then we just have to do the you next agree. one last, next time we'll do the other public hearing yeah it, it, okay, either way, do two, either way. two at the same time okay well plus this will yeah i i think we should have three separate votes on on it so that we can get more public input we're not under a heavy duty timeline oh yeah we are we are <laughs> well, no, I know, but it's, <laughs> may 15th i have to have it submitted so i have to have the public hearing and uh right given all right bylaw. well i think i think we know where we're going why don't we vote to pass this amended bylaw all right all right uh all those in favor all right carried thank you thank you Good stuff. You can uh, send a hate mail to me. <laughs> yeah. Ten, hey, hey. All right. Uh, moving on. Be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council uh, accept the bid from blank for the supply, hauling, and spreading of up to 1,500 cubic yards of A-base gravel at a price of blank 
per cubic yard, excluding GST. Further be it resolved that acceptance of the said bid is conditional on the contractor meeting the specifications and terms outlined in the tender invitation. So before we move and second this one, council received three quotes, quotes yeah. on, on the gravel tender. They were all kind of the same place. Uh, give or take 10%. Wow. They were yeah. close. They were close. Oh, and then uh, Public Works recommended one, I thought. That's correct, yes. Yeah. So we all right, should we express our preferences? Well, we received quotes from Freestyle, Rayanne, and Shabot. Um, I'm not sure how much detail you'd like me to provide. <laughs> They're all just a dollar per cubic yard uh, range, give or take a little less uh, than 10%. I don't think the price point would vary too much here. No, it's more of a quality, quality of material and reliability of vendor, that kind of thing. But I think they're all pretty good from what I hear. So, mm -hmm. um, nope, not true. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, so one can uh, thirty dollars thirty point thirty dollars five cents uh, pure cubic cubic yard. Guys. yard. Uh, Rayanne is 30 and um, Shabo is 32.33. Uh, we are not obligated to take the lowest bid. We should take into consideration public works preference, uh, et cetera. So, uh, Which was? my understanding is freestyle landscaping is the preferred bid uh, this year. Remember, we didn't do this last year. Uh, the, 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 uh, supplier didn't meet our specifications so we didn't have gravel last year we cannot do that again we need we need a yep. good supply of gravel this year okay so okay. the recommended one contract last year because he didn't meet the spec correct so the recommended uh one is freestyle they're in the middle price wise any comments? I, I do remember a couple of years ago there was a concern about whether or not a particular contractor had the uh, the, the right equipment so that they could do the bottom spreading, you know, in the uh, like a hopper type uh, truck. A belly Grant, maybe you could offer more comments on that than I I can. Well, I think I think the three guys who have have bid all have uh, a belly. That yeah, we all have belly dump capability. Um, yeah. That wasn't part of the bid criteria. So freestyle well, then? Yeah. But, so uh, I think we can assume. Can I recommend uh, that we accept freestyle's bid? Yes. Yes, you can. All right. And can I recommend that we not accept? Uh, well, Ryan? we had bad experience with them last year. Free, I just asked if we could recommend <laughs> that we accept freestyle. So absolutely, I agree. Uh, at thirty dollars and five cents per cubic yard. So I will read the resolution. It resolved the arm of Torrey Beach Council accept the bid from Freestyle Landscaping for the supply hall and spread of up to fifteen hundred cubic yards of a base gravel at a price of thirty dollars and five cents cubic yard. Excluding GST, further be it resolved, acceptance of said bid is conditional on the contractor meeting the specs and terms outlined in the tender invitation. May I have a mover? Ian, thank you. Uh, Graham, second, thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, I, I, I just I just only have one thing because I've dealt with Shippo uh, well, back in the day uh, quite a bit. Uh, so I, like, I really I really trust his work. Uh, with with freestyle, I trust that um, Public Works has been working with them uh, diligently for quite a while. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Uh, All suppose suppose a close a close second, maybe next year. All right. All those in favor? All right. Carried. Thank you. Moving on to the VB store lease. Be it resolved toward the five-year VB store seasonal operating lease tender to bidder 5397643 Manitoba Limited as attached in Schedule A, which council received a copy of. Yep. May I have a mover? 
I'll move that. Okay, Graham, thank you. Ian will second. Any discussion? We didn't have a second. No. I think the bid speaks for itself and uh, the uh, last one kind of uh, evaporated on us. So I think we should jump on this one. All right, and and this is Sappy's, or this is, yeah, Jerry and Lee's. So uh, any further discussion? Just because people don't know who the numbered company is. All those in favor? All right. Harry, thank you. Can I nice. suggest, uh, Lon, that you make doubly sure that they're advised that yeah. they've been awarded, you know, that there was some communication problems last time around? I was emailing the wrong partner. I corrected myself since then. Or I didn't want to say I didn't want to say that. I just want to make sure <laughs> they get moved this time. Probably. Thank you. They're under some tight deadlines, I think, to get everything ordered and yeah. up and running. So Yeah. And we're very glad to have them back. Yeah. Yep. Um up next is council meetings. Start time change. Be it resolved to approve the new start times for the remainder of council meetings for twenty twenty three as attached in Schedule A, which Council received. So, may I have a mover? Ian, thank you. Steve, second. Thank you, gentlemen. So, this was discussed sort of at the tail end of our last very long meeting. Um, and it looks like Council is looking at changing our uh, our meetings in Winnipeg and Victoria Beach to 4.30, except in hmm. July and August. The second meetings are at 6 in BB. And why are we? Why would they be different in BB? Can it get too confusing for people? Erwin, can you speak closer to your microphone? You're oh, really mumbled. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that variation in July and August where the second meeting at the beach was scheduled for 6 p.m. as opposed to 4.30. And uh, I was just wondering why that is. It, it strikes me that it's gonna cause a bit of confusion. You know, make them 4.30 or make them six, one or the other, but not switching around. Because so. I wanted to make sure that you're actually reading the attachments I was saying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, you, I you, like can them you can count on <laughs> me to read. <laughs> yeah, it would but be- the 4.30 works uh, BB during July and August, the people that are up there. This, oh, the idea is either doing it before dinner or after dinner. Like, that's really the way it's going to work. I don't eat dinner at six o'clock anyway, so. The happy hour. <laughs> All the happy hour. <laughs> we might have to ask them to open the bar at the social scene to get people to come in at 4.30. Yeah. yeah, I think there was some comment though about being Probably later me. for for people up there when the population is so heavy in, in July and August. but. But that was just me. Yeah. I mean, you can change, obviously, to your. Uh, they were on vacation. They can come whenever, whenever they like. I think those two ought to be changed to 4:30 in the interest of continuity. Um, have we checked with the social scene to ensure that 4:30 works for them on these two? I did days? not. That's, they're usually pretty. They're usually pretty. Pretty common, pretty common for us. Yeah. Uh, if they do get back and say it doesn't work, I'll obviously get back to you right away. Okay. We'll work on something. Else. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, other than today's meeting, which started at six, the rest of the meetings, so the rest of the year, will be starting at four thirty, whether they're in Winnipeg or Victoria Beach, uh, yep. with the board of revision, which is at one o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, that works. Okay. Yep. Okay, I think it's going to be a little early for Victoria Beach, but we'll see. We'll see. See what they say. All right. All we need two weeks to change it. So we if you get a lot of flack, we'll, yeah. we'll move a couple of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll change it if there's you some popular. Fun. Fun. It's so bad, that's fine. It's light, though. <laughs> and I do think that the, the March 21st meeting was a bit of a one off. It was very late. I know I was exhausted the next day. Everybody was exhausted the next day. It was a long drive and your head was swirling and hopefully that's a one-off. We don't get too many of those, but uh, that was a long one. Good. All right, all those in favor? All right. All right. Carrie, thank you. Moonlight in committee, be it result, oops, sorry. Um. 
Be it resolved to approve the formation of a new standing committee of council to be called the Friends of the Inn Committee for Schedule A. Further be it resolved the committee shall be comprised of Graham Randall as chair, Kelly Hearson, Penny McMorris, Aaron Vincent Alcame, Gerald Vincent, and Erwin Kumka. Further be it resolved the committee's purpose is to oversee the rehabilitation of the inn based principally on public donations and. Oh, sorry. And would report to Council on all the rele relevant developments. Further be it resolved the scope of this undertaking and the public financing for re rehabilitation of the Moonlight Inn will require Council approval as it proceeds. May I have a mover? Graham, thank you. Second, Irwin, thank you. Council received the minutes of our first meeting chaired by um, Unit 7 Architecture, Dean Severson and Cleo Severson, and they are the project managers of record. So they are not on this list, but they will be with us every step of the way. Um, and, we, and Graham worked very hard on a terms of reference that was also uh, sent out to council. So are there any comments on any of that? Um, well, this will formalize uh, recognition by council of the uh, of the committee as a as an entity. So uh, it's the uh, it's the the right move uh, uh, to keep this uh, up and running and moving forward. Um, uh, the minutes of these meetings will be submitted to uh, council for their uh, information and, and guidance. The uh, next meeting is uh, going to be held next week on April the 14th um, uh, for uh, for all our interested parties. Uh, Dean Severson will send out the usual uh, uh, invitations. I think he uses Teams rather than go to meeting, but it works works quite well. So we're uh, with this uh, 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 formal acknowledgement of a standing committee, uh, we're off and running. Thank you, Graham. Great work on the terms of reference. Steve, you had your hand up? Uh, I, I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm just curious, is, wouldn't it be more appropriate for it to be a subcommittee of the uh, buildings, of municipal buildings? Because it seems to me that that would be... <coughs> Not really, because you're not really municipal driven. It's not so, really. Um, this whole restoration of the inn, it, it it goes beyond the scope of municipal buildings, uh, which by an amazing coincidence happens to be another one of my portfolios anyway. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't see myself wearing uh, wearing wearing two hats. It's it's a large project. There's many levels and layers of uh, authority and uh, and direction. So it goes beyond the scope of the simple municipal buildings we got to fix a roof we got to repair some damage or something or other um i don't think it would be appropriate to do it as just a, a subcommittee of okay. municipal buildings no as i said i'm fine with that i just thought that that would sort of be more appropriate but yeah okay. well, it's, it's a good question steve i hope i answered it properly and hopefully it's a short-term committee as well once the project is complete yeah. the committee will no longer exist so it's uh so just a question. Um, as I recall, the the, the um, we're not paying for any part of this. They're going to do a fundraise, or are they asking for money? Or um, it's they they very well well they we I um, if we're if we've got our hands out to the public to donate, they're going to say, well, how much are you guys willing to throw in? So uh, just unofficially, because this would be a council decision, there's a very good possibility. Uh, I would think that council might decide to throw a few dollars in the pot. And can, can you um, cross that bridge when we when we come to it? Can you just provide sort of that ten thousand foot view of of the timeline of what you think is going to happen over the next? Mm. Is it six months, two years, five years? A uh, maximum of two years, a min minimum of one year, a maximum of two years. Uh, we would hope to get the foundation work done this fall, whether we're able to carry on with the rest of the renovations or whether they would have to wait till spring. Uh, we'll just uh, see how it goes. Depends on fundraising. There will be a public meeting in May. Uh, that's the tentative plan, right? And, and so we can trot out our plans. Dean will have them all blown up and... Um, 
we'll have someone chairing that meeting and explaining to the public how we got to the drawings we got to and what the next steps are. So the next yes, step actually the whole scheme is predicated on public approval of uh, what we're proposing. So that's that's the next step. Oh, I have to plug in my battery. It says it's running low. Excuse okay. me just a second, please. Any, just just so questions? I understand then, um, this year we're going to raise up the building. We have a Possibly. rough idea. Pardon me? Possibly, yeah. Okay. I think if that's we, roughly we do, 70, probably roughly 70,000. 70 to lift it up and lift it put and a foundation in? Yeah. Okay. Well, lift it. I'm not sure about the foundation part of it. I thought I remember that's what the, the point was. I don't think it's on a... A gray beam. Uh, no, it's kind of on post and pad, yeah. and, and we're not entirely sure what kind of post or what kind of pad is under there. Right. And so once they lift it and look underneath, there might be some other, might be a little, yeah. other things to yeah. deal with. Yeah. Hopefully so, not. Go. It will be a work in progress for sure, but um, we have had an engineer go through it. We've got uh, an architect uh, heading up the project management part of it. We've had safety services go through it. So. Curtis has gone through it. So there's a lot of people with a lot of expertise oh, trying great. to help us out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm back. So the uh, other question then was on the, um, are there any grants? Like it sounds like a historic building. You would think there'd be some grants for this. Is anybody applying for that? Uh, we have not looked into historic buildings. They, they're they a little restrictive. Well, I, I've looked into uh, historical building designation. As a matter of fact, I made a bit of a study at it. Um, it's not much use to us at this at this stage because uh, any uh, any money that come might come out of a historical designation right off the bat cannot be used for the foundation. So that's the so uh, one strike and you're out. We might want to consider a, a historical designation. But that's a much bigger picture. There's uh, uh, there's probably more disadvantages than there are advantages to it. But no, we haven't found a a grant that would cover this, which is why we're going to the uh, public for the funds. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't, we referring to, uh, wasn't referring to a historical designation. I think there's a lot of disadvantages to that. I was just yeah. wondering about, you know, like you're able to find someone to chip in some money for the trail, right? The AB, AB trail. So you never know where the money comes from. but there are people that do like to sort of preserve older buildings and, mm -hmm. and they might have a foundation or something that would provide some funds. That's all. Well, we we'll certainly have to keep our, our, uh, our ears open uh, for that. Uh, but there's, there's nothing on the horizon right now. Uh, to, to put the whole thing in context, um, uh, this project is actually uh, much smaller in its total dollar scope uh, than the tennis project, which is uh, red hot and rolling. Or the uh, upgrades to the uh, uh, community center. Both of these are uh, uh, head and shoulders uh, above what we're trying to do with the Moonlight Inn. So we we fully expect the uh, the public will be just as outpouring uh, for the inn as it has been for these other other projects, including the bakery. Right. Because I, I think I mentioned, oh, it must have been four or five months ago. I met somebody that was interested in being part of the fundraising. She lives in uh, Pelican Point. Um, so I don't know, is your committee going to do the fundraising or are you going to set up a separate committee or a subcommittee to do the fundraising? But if you need $80,000 by the fall, you'd think you'd need a subcommittee this spring when everybody's up there and well, shake I think, the tree a bit, right? Yeah, I think that will be part of the meeting in May, don't you think, Graham? And maybe we'll discuss it as well. On, yeah, well, next that, week. That'll, that'll, be, uh, that'll be the subject of, uh, of next uh, week's uh, meeting, uh, who, how, when. Uh, to get the fundraising off the ground and uh, um, our, our friend uh, 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 Doug Pollard uh, he will speak to that at the uh, at the public meeting but uh, uh, yeah the, the the structure is not quite there yet um, as to uh, uh, who do you make your donations to and uh, and when we'll we'll address that at the next meeting yeah, bear in mind, there's only been one meeting so far, so I'm just getting things formalized. And there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of detail work to be worked out. And but yeah. you know we have a, we have an excellent group, wide variety of expertise, and uh, you know, it'll give us a little bit of time to to make it happen. Graham's doing a great job leading the group, and uh, you know things will unfold as as they should. All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah.
Good questions. Thank you. Any further comments on this resolution? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. And thank you, Council, for the vote of confidence. We have faith in you, Graham. <laughs> uh, Beach Crescent drainage proposal. Be it resolved to approve the civil engineering services proposal to review drainage issues at <clears throat> Beach Crescent in the amount of $4,600 plus applicable taxes as attached in Schedule A for the Beat Resolve to authorize CAO Lawn Turner to sign the proposed uh, proposal agreement. May I have a mover? I'll Irwin, move that. Graham, and then Irwin second. Any further discussion on this? This uh, started with a, uh, uh, a meeting that Irwin and I had uh, last year with a bunch of concerned citizens and some public works people uh, over on Beach Crescent there in uh, dire straits with their basements. So uh, flooding uh, uh, might be poor planning on the part of the municipality, who can say? Uh, but we uh, we worked all the angles and we came up with a, uh, a reasonable and affordable consultant who's willing to come and take a look and an assessment and some surveys that could give us a uh, a benchmark from uh, 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 from which we can move on. Of course, Public Works has to be uh, very much uh, uh, involved in this, in that they would be the ones who would eventually uh, move the dirt around from uh, from A to B. But we need some uh, we need some expert opinion on uh, on how how the water re uh, needs to be uh, directed. So. Um, um, uh, Kelly Harrison uh, has been a good friend of this municipality. Uh, he uh, he searched around and uh, found an outfit that he that he could recommend. I've had uh, a number of conversations with them, and they look like they look like the right choice. If, if, if you want to put it in context, uh, a high quality, small to medium sized consultant, very much along the lines of Unit Seven as a high quality, small to medium sized architectural firm. That's what suits us best rather than uh, our millionaire friends at uh, Stantec. <laughs> yeah. They've right. served us well too though. But anyway. Oh yes, yeah, they Any ruined every, every nickel, right? Okay. Yeah, any further discussion on the Beach Crescent drainage? No. All those in favor? All right. Carried, thank you. Census for ORVs. Be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach conduct a census of exclusively Victoria Beach residents in order to identify vital local statistics and ensure council can properly assess the position of the majority on important municipal issues, which includes, but not limited to, allowing the use of summer and winter ORV operation on municipal roads and lands before the end of the 2023 year and prior to making any future changes RMVB ORV bylaw. May I have a mover? Steve. Second. Calling once. Again, I would just reiterate that I always second every motion, even if I don't agree with the motion of support. You're right, Steve. So I'll second it. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Erwin had his hand up. Pardon me. All right. My comment is that we've had this on the table before. It was defeated and now it's back. So go ahead, Steve. Uh, so um, just to address that, because it was put forward in the emails, uh, the original resolution said the Arm of Victoria Beach will conduct a census or a survey of exclusively Victoria Beach residents in order to properly assess the position of the majority in allowing the use of summer ORV operators. So that was specifically to address the ORV situation. What I'm asking for here is a general census that, quote, <clears throat> includes but not limited to, in other words, it's open to multiple different questions of which we simply do not have the answers to, albeit um, how many people go to the cabin year round. I do, but we don't know that in terms of statistics. We don't know how many people come up only in the summer. We don't know how many people come up for the season where the water is on. 
we don't have those baseline statistics and yet council is always saying how um you know we're trying to do the best for our residents which is true but largely we're flying in the dark because yes we know that our, our permanent resident population has increased by seven, uh, over 73 percent but we don't have baseline statistics about the rest of our population and though they have skyrocketed it's all you need to do is go out there in the winter and i remember three years ago i could very easily take a walk and not run into anybody and it'd be very uncommon for me to run into anybody and now i'm at least walking into one to two people and so you know while it may not seem like a lot the reality is that that is something that we're seeing across the board so just those baseline statistics we don't have the answers to there are a whole bunch of questions in terms of communication any um one of the things that we heard not just over the orv issue but also in terms of um the uh the zoning bylaw is that um you don't communicate with us properly we didn't know about this that was said repeatedly to us and yet we're saying okay well we put up on facebook we put up on a website we don't even know how our residents communicate with us and yet we keep saying well we did this 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 but we're leaving out the part where we're actually asking them how they want to be communicated to a census is a perfect way to do that now uh council Chadsley and uh Kamka the other day were saying how uh the responses from the polling from uh the vbcoa were um you know quite substantial when you take when you take into consideration what the actual population of the vra uh is so while that's very true at the same time when we do take a look at something like the orv issue and we have multiple different areas of the municipality which are so different all the stats that we are working off of for the bylaw this particular one of which <laughs> consistently comes up like we are going to face this again in the future albert beach is going to do a poll in april okay let them do their poll <laughs> oh absolutely no no let them do their poll but we work we work without statistics on that we worked without statistics on want to we worked without statistics on the north end so we passed a bylaw that only had to do with the vra and it's not a vra issue but we don't have baseline statistics on a lot of different issues not just the orvs so i'm asking for as a generalized census and part of that to be dedicated to rvs because this issue will come up and while there are those on council who will roll their eyes at that the simple fact of the matter is is that at least three times this issue has come back up my question i just just for the budget did you want to outsource someone to do this or is somebody internal going to do this i think it's a door-to-door -door knock isn't it or is it a mail out or i, I don't know so, what to do so now. typically you would have a mail out with also the uh, uh the the ability for people to um uh, to complete a um uh, the census online so we can actually utilize their website for something of which is more than capable of the small okay. amount of uh, responses that you would have that would come back in a written form yes we would need somebody in the office to put that in but that would give us vital statistics of which we simply don't have and that's not just simply on the orv issue it's on others but all i'm asking here is that we do a census i know that you guys were generally sort of open more in favor of a survey so fine maybe we can just simply call it a survey but inside of that i want to finally address the orv statistics of which we keep passing these bylaws and we don't have anything to go off of okay but but we have passed the orv bylaw let's let it settle let's let it let's let it play out for a year i i we we got to move on so in terms of a census i just think that the logistics and the administration whether it's mail, mail out, yeah. if it's mail out, that is hours of work. Cost thousands and of dollars. Cost, and cost. And you're not going to get the responses. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we can't make it mandatory. We have to determine exactly what questions to ask, exactly how to ask them so that we're not leading anyone. I mean, I just, I, I think our statistic change, statistics change. We know what our census numbers are. We know what our electors numbers are. We know what our resident numbers are, our properties. We know how many people are roughly in each area of the community. I mean, I, we hear from people loud and clear when there's a major issue. Um, I, 
I'm not sure I hear what you're saying. I do understand why you want this, but I don't know that that we have the time or the talent or the money to do that. No, we didn't have that. We have the talent, but I, I just don't know that we have that we can do it. But that's um Erwin? Oh sorry, Graham, I mean. Um uh, three uh, comments. I'll keep them as brief as I can. I don't like the word census. The census is a complex, expensive process. It needs to say survey. Uh, number two, it's just the wrong time to reopen the can of worms on ORVs. And number three, as Penny has suggested, we're going to need some time to properly, carefully tailor what we want to ask in this survey, what kinds of issues uh would we like to bring out so i mean I've, I've agreed with steve for a long time on the benefits of a survey of our constituents on things that we would benefit from knowing uh, better than we do now but not a census not orvs and we're not quite ready to go to the public with this yet thank you erwin sorry steve just a sec i'll let erwin jump in yeah. uh again i I like the idea of developing a, a tool which would allow us to uh, get some broadly based opinions from our electorate. Um, it, I think it's a little more complicated than we think, and we would need to give it some serious thought. On the issue of, of in this particular uh, proposal, we specifically mentioned the ORVs. We, we spent a tremendous amount of council and constituent energy on the issue. We hold, we held, we listened to 35 or 40 delegations. Uh, I think, you know, I believe, I totally agree with what Penny is saying. Council has made a decision on 1643. Some points in that I don't agree with, but we made a decision. I think we need to allow some time to see how it's actually going to work. And then it may be appropriate to reopen that can of worms. But I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm tired of 1643 and I don't want to reopen it right now. This would be reopening it. Um, Ian had his hand up, Steve, and then I'll go back to you. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, there's uh, surveys are great. I, they're they're a, a great tool to find out uh, what people are thinking about something that's specific. Um, I don't know if somebody sent me a, a survey asking, you know, my age and my sex and all that sort of personal information. I'm not sure I would even fill it out. It's just, I think that's a privacy issue. But if, if we were, were curious to find out what people thought about a zoning bylaw, uh, we put a survey out. Uh, I'm not sure we'd mail it out, but uh, I think you'd have something available online. You put a news release out telling people it's there. We'd love to get your opinion. You know, that makes more sense, doesn't really cost a lot of money. But I think if you're going to do a survey, it needs to be specific uh, and not just sort of try to find a lot of um, sort of personal detail from people because, you know, you, you've had surveys where they ask you how much you make and, and uh, you know, what sex you are. And of course, in this day and age, there are people that, that aren't male or female. So, you know, it's just, it's too personal, I think. Um, so I think the idea of a survey does make sense, but I think you need to sort of target something that you really want to get some information on. And lastly, I'll say that a survey is something that you find out today. It doesn't really tell you anything about what's going to happen next year. So when you're doing a survey, you're getting people's opinion on what they think today. And as far as the ORV, I mean, obviously, council made a decision at the last meeting based on all of the 40-odd uh, delegations that came forward, based yeah. on the, uh, uh, the restricted area, the, was it the VBCOA, uh, they had their stats. Uh, so based on that, we came, I thought we came up and certainly a lot of, not a lot, but at least four or five emails said that they, we came up with the right compromise. So there's no ATVs in the VRA, which is what they didn't want. And um, I think it was, what was it, 66% uh, of the strict area said they didn't mind snowmobiles. So they got what they want, I think, as far as Getting another survey to find out if these numbers change, I, you know, they might change. Uh, you know, maybe that's the, the objective here. But, but the point is, is that you have to find a compromise. You can't just sort of uh, say, you know, 65% say they don't want this, and therefore the other 
35% vote on the Senate. I think you've got to always look for a compromise when it comes to uh, passing something that's very sensitive to everyone. Okay. Final word to you, Stephen. Steve, sorry. So, for, first of all, um, I never, nor would I ever say that we should be asking people what their sex is, nor how much money they're making, or anything of that personalized detail. I said general information on specific issues. And certainly sex and income do not apply to Victoria Beach. And we have a generalized information from the census, um, the federal census. So I would also note that this is the second time that has been requested of council. The first time was way back the first time that we went through this, where we received a whole bunch of emails that asked for censuses and resolutions. And then eventually, it went all the way up to saying that we should have a, um, um, the word just uh, left my head, but a referendum on the topic. So that was the first time we went through it. The second time, we were hearing between second and third reading, nonstop, through the emails from the VRA that we needed to have a census and a resolution. And Ian, exactly as you pointed out previously in the meeting that we had on Friday, that was a substantial amount of the VRA percentage-wise. So that is basically what we've heard twice now. They wanted, uh, they wanted uh, either some sort of census or some sort of uh, survey, um, some sort of hard data to show that we were making the right calls. Also, what I'm hearing here is that this is too rushed. So fine. So, in your words, uh, Erwin and um, Ian, why don't we say 2024? We can allow some time to pass. See what people think of it. Allow them to have that one that one year, and that allows us time to put some serious thought to the issue, develop the tools of this complicated issue and then create either a, a census or survey of which we can use to effectively gauge what the mood is of the entire municipality on multiple different issues, not just ORVs. But the bottom line is that the ORV issue is not going to go away as much as we'd love to think that it is. And so that's the reason I said including but not limited to. There are other issues that we face. Mm. There but are. the ORV issue is going to come back because exactly as you pointed out, Ian, we heard from the VRA in droves, but the VBCOA, as you pointed out, was communicating to their residents, the residents in that area. Wanasing didn't hear anything from them. Yes, in we turn, did. Uh, the, North, the North End, we didn't hear from. And Albert Beach, they're doing their poll in April. So we made a decision based on numbers from one area of the beach. There's three others. So that's the reason why I asked for that to be in there. So as I said, let's leave, why don't we pass a resolution, amend it to say 2024, so that we can again, come up with the proper tools we can, and we can put the proper thought into exactly as everyone said, the complicated issues. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, I, I think that, uh, you know, if you go down this path, you could do this on every bylaw that we have. You could say, we'll pass a bylaw and then next year we'll revisit it to see uh, what people think and put a survey at it. I mean, I think you, you do it the other way. You, you pass a bylaw based on common sense and, and uh, finding a, a uh, compromise that, that works for everybody. And then you see what happens. You don't get, I know you're thinking something's gonna change, but that's just your opinion. It's, it's nothing more than your opinion. Let's find out. Let's just wait and see what happens. And then next year, if, if you find that there's, you know, there's a large contingent that uh, wants to bring this up again, bring it up as a resolution, but do it next year. But we don't need to pass a resolution today about um, putting this into a survey. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I, you know, council could make a decision at some point in time in the future to, to do whatever they want to do uh, to, to tie us down at this point. I don't think it serves any purpose. Uh, again, well, other than other than you know, let's let a little bit of time go by. Let's see what happens. Let's see how the our law enforcement works out, and then we're we're going to be in a better position to make an assessment. Do we do we dare reopen this can of? And listen, unfortunately, I'll, I'll, I'll all of you. 
Like I, I, I really would. That the best time to um, to do this would be when the issue comes up again. The only problem is, is that I was asking for it. I was asking for a survey or a census before we went into the final reading, before we went into third reading. I was asking it for after second reading because of all the massive changes that were made. And we didn't do it. It is what it is. We have done what we have done. Let's move. So how can I trust the next time that we go through this again, when it does come up again, that we're actually going to do a survey to understand what the different areas want? Well, it depends how it is developed. Remember, this whole thing all came down to enforcement. We fixed the enforcement. Game over. Uh, I, I could not possibly support uh, uh, a resolution that implies we would reopen the ORV debate. That is counterproductive to the extreme. All right, gentlemen, I'm not hearing anything new on this no. debate. So I will call the question on the on the resolution on the table. All those in favor, do you need me to reread that? It's a VB census on ORV use and other important municipal issues. All those in favor? Steve, opposed? Defeated. Thank you for the discussion. Sorry about that, Steve. Moving on to. It's on a public meeting. So. Pardon me. I was just saying it's on a public meeting, so everybody knows how how it was voted on. So. Well, you've planted a seed. Take credit for that. All right. There is no. Correspondence. Right, correspondence. So the notice of the 2023 tax bylaw public hearing. <laughs> yeah, it'll be on the 2nd of May here in Winnipeg at 4.30. And that will be advertised. Yep, in, we'll get it all set up and advertised in the paper and website. And the planning also. act. Can I, uh, uh, just, uh, what does that mean? Is that's when people come to- People can come and ask questions. Lon will have a Yeah, there's a financial plan, like it's eight pages long, and then I do a presentation for everybody to see. Oh. where the money's going and how much money we have in the bank and that sort of okay. thing. A little more detail. We did it last year? Yep. yep. Everybody and does it. Did you get a, anybody out or? Mm. No, they don't typically come out to us, no. Okay. Uh, in the past, last. we have had a few people at our financial plan hearing, but, you know, maybe four or five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Graham? There was more uh, than Mr. last year. Can I, speak, can I speak briefly to correspondence? Well, sure. Can we just go through with the four items under correspondence? Oh, I'm sure. I thought uh, we were passing through correspondence. Sorry, right, I'll, I'll wait till my turn comes up. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything further on the bylaw? Uh, not public that hearing? one. No. Nope. Uh, there'll be another public hearing. Sorry, I just came up yesterday for um, a new subdivision. It's been, you know, conditionally approved. Now we just have to go through the hearings for the variance on the frontage and the public road that they're going to be building on their own oh. private land. So it's just a public hearing for that. Uh, everything's been mailed out to the residents within 100 meters and posted on the board and on our website. So is that for May 2nd as well? No, that'll no, be for April 18th, and that'll be at 6 p.m. But that'll just be after the council meeting. Yeah. Then BB. I'm just come later. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, uh, employment opportunities. Uh, we still have. The gate office is full. There's no opportunities there. The admin, we're good too. Uh, just the public works is probably the big one. And, right. and the golf course, I, I don't know. Carl handles that one. Yeah. Golf course, so. But if we get some resumes of people interested, we can hand them to Carl, right? Yeah. Is, is there a shortage of people um, uh, applying for these jobs? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, no. so you don't we had help to turn away a couple people for the gate office. We had more than enough. And, Public Works, they have four or five resumes now for their okay. three positions. So, yeah. No, so I guess these are pretty good. Live up there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, or they're up there for the summer, like for the gate office. They go, okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's perfect. I mean, yeah. you keep hearing the other side of that where it's hard to find people because of uh, housing up there, but I guess it's uh, not an issue in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah, no, Public Works, they have local residents there to order. There's only a couple, two or three people in public works who actually live in the municipality. Maybe okay. two. The others come. They're not far away, but. Yeah. How about doctors? Uh, is there an issue there, Steve, uh, trying to find doctors to go up? 
No, not typically. The uh, generally the biggest issue is um, trying to schedule them in, and so you'll you'll on you'll have um, times where two or three doctors want to come up at the exact same time, and so that presents a, an issue because when you have these gaps and you just need to sort of fit everybody in. That's usually the biggest problem. Great, thanks. Uh, but just uh, just on the on the doctors again, I, I really do think that we should consider looking at not for this year, but for for next year, possibly extending the season on uh, you know one week either on both ends or one end just to have that additional um, health care. Does that come from the doctors' committee, Steve? They're open to it, um, and but they're not going to say that they're requesting that only because it's you know council's decision but um, certainly they are open to it. Do you think they'd be able to find physicians willing to come in the middle of June and the middle of September or early Yeah, September? again, it's, it's, some, it's something that we would, we would need to know that council is okay with, so then that way we can explore it for the, uh, for the next year, because at that point we can make uh, proper recommendations to council saying that yes, this would be okay. But again, it would allow for um, a little bit more health protection for the uh, for the area. Well, I, I'm not I'm not sure that many people who are permanent residents who live down here year round look to the doctor's committee to, to the clinic in summertime. I mean, they they all have regular doctors who are in Pine Falls or Selkirk or Winnipeg. So, you know, I, I, if you could get the doctors to come up earlier, great. We're all in favor, but but I really don't think it's going to be focusing on providing medical services to the permanent residents. They've already got their docs. Well, as I as I mentioned previously, um, the numbers for uh, residents who are coming up, um, you know, longer now has increased dramatically. Although we can't put any numbers to it because we just simply don't know. But anecdotally, if you take a look around, um, there are substantially more people coming up earlier and leaving later. Yeah, you know, you, there's no extra cost for the municipality to have the doctors come earlier or stay later. If you can get the people, go for it. But you know, I think Penny's point is, you know, many of these doctors have families, their kids are going to be in school. So the availability uh, may not be uh, what we think. So, but I would, say I would encourage the committee to work on it. Go for it. Yeah, just have the committee make a recommendation. So, yeah, if they can find the physicians, yep. there's no extra cost for us. Well, you know, there's there's power and wow. lights, and internet, and toilets, and there is a little bit of and extra cost, but it's minor. Minor, yeah, minor extremely minor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll have, a, we'll have a we'll have a bake sale to cover off the extra yep. cost. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to uh, back to our correspondence. We got a letter from, from a resident about a, a lit crosswalk at David Road and Highway 59. And I can say that council has approached Manitoba Infrastructure and Transportation, who are responsible for the highways in the past, to lower the speed limit from the corner of 504 and 59 up to the arch. We were refused. We asked if they could, if we could have another access for garbage and recycling on Highway 59. We were refused. We asked um, for a crosswalk from Atia across the highway to the market. We were refused. So I just really have my doubts that Manitoba Highways will agree to a lit crosswalk on David Road. Um, I, I'm not. Did they, did they disagree with it in principle? Or they're not. They're not going to fund it for you. You would have to fund it at 100 percent, I'm sure. But are they, they? They were against the idea. They just said no. They just said no. So you know, we we've never approached them on this specific topic, but I I, I don't know. I think the other issue is that uh, I mean, I live on that side of the um, the highway, and there's there's more than one access to the beach. It's not just David Road. It's uh, King Edward. Uh, is takes you right down to the sand cliffs and there's a sand cliff trail uh, that people cross the road um, and then right at the 59 instead of turning left you turn right and you're right down by the beach so it's it's one of those things where and, and I think 
it was just one person that brought this to our attention. So I think if you're going to look at it, you've got to look at that with a bigger picture. And so it just means that once people see that, then they say, well, what about, what about, what about my area? What are, you know, and yeah. I, I think I said this before uh, in an email that you've got the same issue on Sunset was it Boulevard or whatever it is. You've got all those access points to the beach. Yeah, but no vehicles in the summer. Right, but you have vehicles uh, in May vehicles. and June, and you have them in September, October, and I still go to the beach in those months. So you have the same issue, and then you get kids riding bikes, and uh, you know, yeah. why don't you put some crosswalks there? Same idea, right? Yeah. So now you're looking at more than one. You're looking at several. Just looking at the whole RM yeah. rather than just one spot. That's right. All. Yeah. Good point. Any other comments? Do you, Steve? I I would only only say that. You know, we we heard from that one resident, but uh, the issue had been brought up previously. So, um, it's like a, you know, a while a while back when I, when I first started looking at the uh, the AB to BB trail, and yeah, you know, there, there are several spots in which it could be uh, beneficial, but um, you know, that 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 section is a little bit more dangerous than the rest of the highway because it, it there is sort of a blind intersection. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't see any harm in asking. Um, I mean, we got we got a new uh, CAO. Maybe he knows some tricks or something of which we weren't aware of before. I definitely agree. <laughs> I'll try though. I'll yeah. Well, I'll ask. I, mean, it Steve, I don't think uh, David Road. There is. It's a blind intersection. The road curves around, and you're on David Road side. You can see everything coming down that road. The same as you can see everything at at King Edward or any of the other spots. Yeah, we're on as the, far as the moment that they cross one, but not on power station is going to be a problem. Well, I mean, you're still going to be crossing both directions, right? So I think that's history. But if Lawn, you know, if Council wishes, Lawn can send MIT a letter and say, what do you think about? Yeah, I don't have a problem. Crosswalk. What are you going to ask them? What's the question? <laughs> I'm going to say Ian wants a crosswalk across the... Oh, but what's a crosswalk? No. Are you going to paint white stripes? No, the other the the one, you've seen the ones where the, they Push hit the button and the lights, light. yeah. Oh, okay. That, that's what you're asking, Steve, is, uh, or that's what you think? And that's on a 70 yeah. kilometer yeah. hour stretch. It's not a 30 or a 50, it's 70. I'll just ask them in general principle, whatever style it is, and see if they're even open to the idea. So I would buy four. Why don't, we, why don't we, instead of doing that, why don't we take a look at what it costs to, to put one of those things up and put the button in and put the hydro in? And it's easier to ask if we can do it first before we investigate the cost, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, because yeah. we have other issues. We have other spots that need the same thing. So if we're, gonna, if, if we're gonna do it, find out the cost, and if they say, sure, you can do it, then we'll do all four spots. It could easily be $3,000 to get the hydro to that location. It's a long well, way. To... I mean, you'd be looking at you'd be looking at a solar uh, a solar option uh, for that spot um, because it, it's you know it allows. Well, it would have to be uh, solar. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? They do have solar um, solar powered crosswalks, but they're just uh, signs on either side of the road, mm -hmm. and you hit the button, and it does blink right yellow. I've seen those, and they're fairly reasonable. They're not very expensive. I don't know what they are, but I've seen those. That would be better than nothing, really, because you do notice it. That... And there are semis that go down that highway, right? So and and there, uh, I, the last time I, I, I sent this to council, I think the last time I looked at it because I was looking at uh, Sappy Road was around five to eight thousand dollars, something around there. It, it springs to mind. But I would also note too that along um, uh, uh, in Broken Head now. Uh, they have the uh, they have those speed signs going up and down, so it might be that they're a little bit more open to it at this point. So again, that, that yeah. it doesn't hurt to ask. All right, all right, thank you. All right. Uh, RMVB AMM submission regarding emergency services for rural population. Uh, we were asked by the AMM if we all municipalities were asked if they had any questions for the provincial leaders forum. Did, um, so we did send one in, thank you to Lon, uh, about the provision and enabling of uh, first responders in small rural communities. Um, I guess it was more just for your information. We'll see where it goes. Um, Penny, Penny, did you did you add on my question about why our fire department is not uh, sent out on medical emergencies? 
No, that was not added in. Well, that was part of the legislation changes though. It's just, um, I can't remember the details. It's kind of technical what they changed. But, um, so that's a 911 issue, I guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's an upcoming uh, information session, I think on the 25th. So maybe we'll have a chance to find out what's happening. And you realize that session is in Portage La Prairie? Yep. Okay. And tomorrow at the AMM in the afternoon, there's a fairly substantial amount of information at the convention too, tomorrow afternoon that we'll be going through. Are you going back tomorrow, Erwin? I have a, a council meeting in the morning, but I will be there as, as soon as that's over. All right. So that was what uh, was on our list for correspondence. Graham, you had your hand up. Um, uh, there's uh, one piece of correspondence I'd like to speak to briefly. Uh, we actually, uh, uh, we all of each one of us has uh, received it. It's from a an interested uh, uh, resident in the uh, in the VRA. Uh, they have asked whether we could reconsider planting a few trees and maybe a little bit of grass at Arthur and First as well as King Edward and Seventh, uh, where these uh, these intersections were. Uh, uh precipitously uh, mowed down not that long ago uh in that we're involved in planting all kinds of trees around uh our waste and recycling and perhaps some other locations uh i'd like to suggest that council uh, uh reconsider their uh, refusal to do uh at least a uh, a little bit of planting to help pl placate these folks they uh it's a real big deal to them. It would be nice if we could, if we could uh, make the gesture to perhaps meet them halfway. They're willing to submit sketches and ideas and things like that, and uh, I just don't feel comfortable saying no. Well, we did say no by resolution in September. I know we did, and I voted in favor of that resolution. They've asked if we could reconsider. I haven't had an opportunity to read the emails that that may that yeah. came to them, so I can't comment on. Right. On I just I just wanted to uh, acknowledge their uh, their correspondence and uh, get it on the table. Where it goes from here is, of course, up to uh, up to council. But uh, uh, I wanted to get it on the record somehow. So thank you. Okay, Steve, you had your hand up, and then Ian. I was, I was going to say that I know that they're coming up with a proposal for council. So, um, yeah, I'd be very much in favor of doing whatever we can to sort of rehabilitate uh, what was uh, sort of removed. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there any benefit to having members of that group to around the VRA with maybe our, no, I don't know, with our public works, the yeah. fire department maybe, to explaining why that, those were taken out maybe or some issues that they have with the vehicles operating in there like, i don't know i'm not, I'm not sure ian yeah. i remember seeing the email and i remember seeing a picture uh and so it was sort of a, a large box with some flowers in it so i guess that's what was removed am i, am I right there was um, one, one removed on first and arthur it was in disrepair. It was made out of creosote railway ties, been hit by the snowplow several times. It had not had plants put in it for a number of years. That was removed. What was removed at 7th and King Edward was a stand of, of mature trees. Okay, yeah. So it's the um, first there, thing I'm we're presently to. not asking to uh, recreate the box. Uh, I think they understand that it'll just fall into disrepair. They're asking for a bit of grass and a few trees. Uh, along the uh along the perimeter and uh no uh dragging them around uh, to show them where the fire trucks need to go that's not going to cut the ice with these people okay okay i'm fine okay well uh, again i haven't had a chance to read the emails so i'll do that and maybe we can bring this forward at the next meeting yeah that's great thank you very much okay. thank you all right any other correspondence Great, hearing none, we will move on to adjourn. There's no in camera, so be it resolved the council adjourn. Be it resolved that the April 4th, 2023 regular council meeting be adjourned and confirm that the next council meeting will be on Tuesday, April 18th, 2023 at 
4 30 p.m. at the Beach Beaches Social Scene in Victoria Beach. You got it. Graham, um, that Friends of the Moonlight Inn, do you know what time that meeting is going to be on the 14th or? 1.30. Can I, can can I have okay. for this motion? <laughs> Ian, oh, yeah. Second. Irwin, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. We will just, don't, don't ever interrupt a motion. Thank <laughs> you.